Hey there, this is Paleontologizing. I'm Danny Anduza, and today we're going to be exploring something pretty weird. This is not what I had planned for this week, but sometimes the best laid plans are displaced by current events. And well, duty calls. So last month, reports started to surface online about a strange looking animal carcass discovered in northern India. <laughs> Apparently found by a worker who was cleaning out a derelict electrical facility in the city of Jaspur, in the state of Uttarakhand, the carcass is still partially covered with flesh and features a longish tail, a gracefully curved neck, and a fearsome-looking skull. Local officials were called in to investigate the remarkable idea that this was a small dinosaur living in modern times. So could this really be a dinosaur? Of course not. What are you, stupid? I'm sorry. That's not the right approach. It's just that I get frustrated when sensationalistic garbage like this gets spread around just because journalists don't want to do their jobs. So even ignoring the fact that the non-bird dinosaurs went extinct 66 million years ago, it is obviously not a dinosaur because, and I'm speaking as a dinosaur paleontologist here, it looks nothing like a dinosaur. I'd also like to posit that this thing is not as big a mystery as it is being reported. But that didn't stop lazy journalists from latching onto the dinosaur claim anyway without bothering to consult anybody who knows anything. They did, however, publish lots and lots of articles. And of course, this being the internet, that brought all kinds of wacky characters out of the woodwork. This is a major discovery that's pretty much proving that dinosaurs are probably, I mean, this is just, it looks pretty authentic. They have found a dinosaur corpse in India. The dinos that resemble the shape of the 28 centimeters long creature. The mystery of dinosaurs thickens. Um, what it is, more or less, is... The Coel office is... We're not being told a real history of Earth here. It's in the Dromaeosaurus. Dianon Ichus. Creation, evolution, and um, the fact that the world is only 6,000 years old, and man lived with dinosaurs. Try to hide it up. When you have a dinosaur that is found in India with flesh still on its bones. And with the power of manipulation of the DNA. So there's definitely aspects of our history that the mainstream scientific people in charge don't want us to know. It tends to shake up the status quo of what they're teaching us. Yeah, they definitely want to keep hidden and evolution is a false religion, pretty much manufactured by Satan, who just wants to distract people. What will they do with the dino DNA? What? Especially when you start talking about Nephilim and mixing the species and the different things that's going on with the genetic manipulation. But uh... So it should be obvious to any thinking person that this is not a dinosaur. But you're probably wondering, what is it? Well, to find out... Let's do some paleontologizing. Oh, obviously, if it still has flesh on it, then it's not a fossil. So why is this even a paleontological question? Well, paleontology is one of the broadest sciences there is, and our expertise often has bearing on other fields. For example, paleontologists will sometimes get called in to archaeological sites to look at animal skeletons. When you think about it, we are some of the only scientists who typically identify animals based only on their bones. It's a practice called osteology, and it's kind of our wheelhouse. So just by looking at the bones that are visible in the Jaspur carcass, especially the structure of the skull, the general shape of the teeth, and the zygomatic arch, I can tell right off the bat that this thing is a carnivorin. They're the group of mammals that includes lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! Plus canines and hyenas, foxes, raccoons, pinnipeds, and all kinds of little weaselly guys, too. This group split off from the rest of the mammals probably sometime in the Eocene, about 42 million years ago. And from their common ancestor, they inherited something that we call 
carnassials. No, not those carnassials. I'm talking about the distinctly shaped cheek teeth that these critters use for slicing up meat and stuff like that. So there you have it. The Jespur mystery carcass is not a dinosaur. It's some variety of small carnivorous mammal. Glad we could clear that up. I'm Danny Anduza, and uh, I'll see you around. What's that? You're not satisfied with that conclusion? You expected more from me. All right. I'll challenge accepted. So obviously this thing is some kind of carnivory. I mean, that level of identification is child's play. But what if we could narrow it down all the way to the species level? Well, let's see if we can knock this one out of the park. When I first saw this, I thought, Eh, it looks like a cat to me. But I wasn't confident about that. At least, not enough that I could really get cocky about it. You see, I am not a mammal paleontologist. I work mostly on dinosaurs, and so my knowledge of mammalian skeletal anatomy is not fantastic. So of course I reached out for help on Facebook and on Twitter from some of my paleo friends who know a lot more about mammalian osteology than I do. So how do you go about clarifying an enigma like this one? Well, it's not really that difficult. First, we start with what we know. It's plain to see that this is not a fossil, so it has to be a modern taxon, and it's obviously some kind of carnivorant. We know where it was found, and so we can use that to narrow it down too. With a little help from my friends, I figured out that it's definitely not a cat, and it's not an otter. Again and again, there were two possibilities that my mammal expert friends kept returning to. Either it was a herpestid, which is a mongoose, or a mustelid, which is some kind of weaselly guy. Using range data, we can come up with our most likely candidates and then parse it down from there. The dentary seems to be the wrong shape for the Indian gray mongoose, and the limbs appear to be too long for the small Asian mongoose, the apparent lack of a sagittal crest seems to be another giveaway. I could be wrong, but I don't think this thing is a mongoose. So then, by process of elimination, that leaves us with this little guy. Yellow-throated marten. Scientific binomial, Martes flavigula. Known to Russian speakers as the Kharza, it's a common animal in that part of the world, and relatively well studied. As a member of the weasel family, the yellow-throated marten is closely related to the pine marten of Europe and the American marten of the western US and Canada, although it's slightly larger and more primitive. Multi-gene phylogenetic analysis seems to indicate that it diverged from its relatives in the early Pliocene, and then hung around doing its thing in Asia until the current day. While it might look cute with its handsome, brightly colored coat, the yellow-throated marten also has some serious moxie, and it isn't afraid to attack and eat animals much larger than itself, apparently including small deer. As for it being our culprit, well, the geography is an obvious match. As for its anatomy, the length of its neck, its posture, the structure of its sacrum, its lack of a prominent sagittal crest, and the general morphology of its skull all seem to line up beautifully with our mystery remains. And bingo, it's a match. About as perfect as we could hope for with the available evidence. Location, abundance, size, morphology of the skull, it's all there. Now, of course, I can't be 100% certain that I'm right about this ID, but at least now we have a falsifiable hypothesis. And if the people in possession of this carcass actually want to test this hypothesis, it should be pretty straightforward. As long as the thing is male, then all you got to do is open it up and examine its baculum. The yellow-throated marten has a very distinct one, different from all its relatives, so in terms of identification, that should be your silver bullet. 
Oh, and by the way, if you don't already know what a baculum is, then I strongly suggest that you look it up. It's a fun little piece of trivia to share with your friends and family. So anyway, I feel that this is a very fitting conclusion. It is somehow very appropriate that one of these spirited little animals would clamber into an electrical facility to keel over and shrivel up in a final act of mischief, so that years later it would fool a bunch of gullible humans into thinking that it was a dinosaur. Dinosaurus. So what can we learn from this? Well, first off, we see a dismal failure of journalism on multiple levels. It starts with those first reports last month, and it continues with every instance of a credulous journalist choosing to just repeat the dinosaur thing without bothering to consult, oh, I don't know, maybe anybody who studies dinosaurs? That would have stopped this farce right at the beginning. Now, I'm not suggesting that anybody should lose their job over this, but it is discouraging to see the piss-poor quality of all the reporting here. Now, you might be asking yourself, uh, what's the harm? Why be concerned over a bogus dinosaur corpse story? But I think you already know the answer. This kind of nonsense makes people stupider. And in this day and age, I don't think we need any more of that. So, to try and end on an optimistic note, let's focus on what you and I can do to try and improve things. Well, for one, if you see more examples of the Just Spore Dinosaur Corpse popping up on the news, then you can share this video in the comment section. It might not be much, but at the end of the day, it's better than nothing. Sometimes that's all you can really ask for. Anyway. Until next time, I'm Danny Anduza. Keep on paleontologizing.